And so then that's something on, to keep with us when we go there. And then further on to the Temple of Athena. In um, the Temple of Athena... Yep. Sorry, I was, I was going to ask what they actually found out from the shopping. Like, do they have any... I'm going to cover that when you guys actually meet up with them. Yep. Oh, okay. Because I'm going to focus on one thing at a time. So you'll head up to, Athe to the Temple of Athena, and this one looks... A lot more warlike than, it, and it kind of makes sense since she is a temple of a, or it is a, a goddess of war. Specifically, it's the, it's kind of interesting how it is. It's since she is has a domain of war, she's also with knowledge, wisdom, civilization, and as you come up close, you see above the tower, above the um, the entrance to this particular temple, there is a statue, a rather large statue of an owl, and the owl just it seems to be staring at you. Who does it follow us as we're moving? It doesn't appear to follow you at all, but no matter where you are, you feel like it's staring at you. Who? You. Who? So you said that's happening as we're entering. Like the, as you come up close, this is standing outside. Like there's two of them flanking the doors, and they're both standing up on like a pillar above the uh, actual doorway outside. So you'll get inside, and you won't see it anymore. Oh, is the, are like the necks moving to follow us, or does it just feel like they're watching? It feels like they're wa they're actually watching you, but they aren't moving in the least. So like okay. those weird paintings where the eyeballs look like they're following you? Yeah. Similar but, idea, yeah. But the eyeballs are following you in those paintings. And to answer that question, Jeebs, relatively well. Not like better than average, just they, you know, they're in the same pantheon, everything's fine. Like they're in the same pantheon, everything's fine. I don't remember enough about mythology to remember how they're actually related. Okay. And I know that the DD might... mythology isn't quite the same anyway, because by my logic, all of them would be neutral at best, except for Hades, who would be like good. Okay. I might know what you're trying to get. So. I'm trying to get Sierra's butt. Obviously. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, let's go on in. Risu, I'm going to mute you because of whimpers. I'm muting myself. Good. Thank you. All right, we'll go in. All right. So you head in there, and there's, like, the first thing you notice going in here is that opposed to what you saw in the Temple of Apollo, people just in, like, more long, flowing robes, pretty much everyone here who would have, like, the, like, you see a number of people who are in, full plate mail. They have a shield with the emblem of the owl on it. Um, fight, fight, long swords, etc, etc. Et and you can just tell at this glance that these are clerics, and they are in full battle dress. This is more my kind of place. <laughs> Not surprising me in the least. As with last time, we'll go up to somebody that seems in charge, but not, like, head of the temple in charge. So somebody who looks like they're t um, telling people what to do, but they don't look like they're top of the chain. They don't look like they're busy, correct? Yeah. Is All there right. any reason you and don't want to talk to the high priest? High priests tend to be a little bit more uppity, I guess you could say. A little bit more, uh, my god's the best. Well, obviously yeah. if they're the high priest, then their god is the best, right? I mean, to them, yes, but the I tend to find the ones that aren't the high priests tend to be a little bit more available and willing to speak to people who aren't part of their temple. Right. Fair enough. And if that makes sense. Yeah. Looking around, you do find a someone who uh, looks to be uh, one that you're looking for, and they appear to be a... Oh, what are they? What are they going to be? They're going to be just human. So you'll find a human who is, again, they're dressed in this full plate mail, they have a nice, the nice shield, short sword on their back, or not short sword, long sword on their back, and they just, they notice you walking up to them and they kind of dismiss the people they were speaking to to turn to address you. <clears throat> and they'll kind of speak up, uh, yes, what can I do for you? Um, I'll nod at, uh, I can't remember her name. Sari um, Sariel. Sariel, and pull out my holy symbol kind of just like motioning for her to do the same. Yeah, and she'll kind of um, do the same. We're, we, as you can see, we are two clerics of the same pantheon, though maybe not the same god, and we were willing if, uh, wondering if you'd be willing to answer our questions. Hmm. What questions do you have? 
Um, these are questions that uh, pertain to the area outside, if you know what I mean. Uh, if that explains enough. Yes, of the blight. Go on. Uh, I was wondering, um, just if you guys had, we heard that you guys tend to have more adventurous of uh, followers, so I was wondering if you had any advice you could give to people who might be going into the blight. Hmm. Well, normal people that would be going into the blight, we would simply tell them don't. <sighs> However, since you are clerics, uh, rather respectable looking clerics from the look of you. Thank you. My Thanks. suggestion would be my suggestion would be just to beware of the undead and be ready to repel them at any point they approach. But itself is quite dangerous. And we have lost numbers of our own, even going in prepared. Would you have any armor or weapons that are specifically made to deal with the undead? We have a few things here and there to take care of. It's nothing that we would regrettably be able to spare. What about holy water? We do have a supply of holy water which we could offer up. It is not that difficult to make, and we do have a number of our weaker clerics who have used a lot of their time dedicated to making more. Would you have any way to attach holy water to an arrow, for instance, that, that we could basically shoot it and do the same effect? I figured that uh, might be something. That would be a similar concept to attaching to a... Uh, like a poison vial, but I know you probably don't use that much. I'm trying to figure out the word. To applying the effect along to a weapon. It is. It works, more or less, though it's not as potent as a single spray of holy water in the face. It kind of seems to grin at that. Though, it does last for at least, uh, at least an hour or so. In layman's terms, uh, let me actually double check what holy water does damage wise. I'm I'm really on top of this. I know um, Pathfinder has like holy oil or something like that, which you apply to a weapon and it deals holy damage. Page one fifty one. Yeah, so holy water you throw it deals two d six radiant damage. So I'm gonna say it would allow you to do. Uh, I don't want to make it too powerful for being 25 gold apiece. That's the problem. 1d4? Even that's kind of powerful for 25 gold apiece. 1d4 for one minute. Uh, I'm going to say something along the facts where it won't, might not do extra damage, but creatures that are explicitly weak to Radiant or are weak to Holy Water they would still take the effects of as yeah. though they were hit by holy water. I feel that's an act that's a reasonable trade off. So like something that has regeneration unless it's hit by radiant energy. If it's hit by a weapon coated in holy water, even though it doesn't take radiant damage, it will still be effective. Mm. What about this as a suggestion? And I'm gonna say it'll last like fifteen minutes. What about this as a suggestion? It takes the base damage of your weapon from bludgeoning or whatever to radiant. Is That's that still really strong. Is it? I feel that that can be really strong in several cases, because then you get along, oh, I'm going to take this normal short sword, cover in holy water, and then this thing that resists bludgeoning, whole, uh, bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing unless it's magic, I don't care. Because it's now just pure radiant. Right. Yeah, I feel like that's a bit too much, so... Uh... You're, but it basically you're saying using holy water you could make a sunblade. Without the yeah, light. that's pretty much what you would be doing, Jeeves, is making any weapon into a sunblade for like 15 minutes, and that's... And without any of the other amazing bonuses of sunblades. The only other bonus is sunblades. For sunblade. 25 gold, yeah. though, I think it's too much. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I kind of like my idea that it would give you, say, like a half hour, an hour, where things that are like weak to radiant, weak to um, holy water, will actually take the effects of it, even if they don't take extra damage. And if they would otherwise resist a weapon, 
I'll say they might not. I'll have to play around with that, my idea. I don't want to set anything in stone until I come up with it. I can probably tell you at the start of the next session what I decide to allow. Right. And basically, you're saying it costs one holy water to do that, and I can do that with any holy water I buy? Uh, yeah, I, I would say that for sure. You can use one application of holy water to throw it or to use it like this, and that's the problem. I don't want to make this more powerful than throwing it. Yep, okay. Like, I don't want to make it explicitly more powerful. I don't mind if it's because you're really good at swinging a sword that it's more powerful. I just don't want it to be so there's like no reason that you would ever throw holy water. Yep, okay. Um, so, since we're heading in there, why don't we just load up on flasks of holy water? Uh, Get a couple, yeah. We do have a supply of holy water, which we could help spare probably also provide you with some silver dust if you'd wish to make your own when you're out there. It is very easy to run out after all. Um, sure. How about, uh, how about if we buy ten holy water? Mm -hmm. 250 gold? Yep. I think we can spare that. Mm -hmm. Pretty easily, I'd assume. So that's now we have 13 holy water. Liz is going to hand them the coin. And the uh, cleric will kind of take the coin, count it out. They'll have called for what appears to be like a squire, like you would have seen among knights or anything. Uh, a young boy, probably teenager, maybe 13, 14 years old. He'll kind of run out and he'll kind of return with a uh, large crate and he'll kind of set it down carefully. You can look inside and you see that there is a number of vials of holy water. Lily will take the ten that she bought and put them in the bag of holding. Did you want me to buy any silver for it? Or whatever they said it was. It's silver dust to craft more. Um, sorry, I will think for a moment. It might not be the worst idea in case we run out, though. It would just make more sense to buy more holy water. If we're anywhere around, if we're in the middle of a dungeon and we run out, though, uh, there's not much oh. we can do. Well, yes, but I mean, unless we were to run out of everything and then find more and find silver dust in the dungeon, it would make just as much sense. But at that point, we'd almost be better off pulverizing some silver coins. All right, we have plenty of silver coins, so. <laughs> I mean, realistically, it's made from silver dust. Pulverize silver coins to make dust. Cast a spell. That's your we need holy water, and we don't have any other choice to get it. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Now, one other question. Would yes. you know anything about, uh, a friend of mine up in Redwall had to deal with a vampire a while back. Would you know anything about a vampire's uh, and she's just going to list off the weaknesses that she learned, other than, than what we know. Anything important? Roll. I don't want to. He'd probably Deception. give it three, really. So, what does he know? Uh, what does he know is the best question with this. Let me, let me double check by opening up the box to manage the vampire page to make sure I'm not giving you misinformation. Or to make sure if I'm giving you misinformation, it is intentional. <laughs> <laughs> That's really the long and the short of it. If I'm giving you the wrong information, I want that to be intentional. All right, then. So, you would think for a second, vampires, that's... Those are some of the most dangerous creatures. We've... Hmm. I don't think I've heard of one up in Redwall recently. I know there was one probably 50 years ago that was dealt with, but... Other than that, I don't think we've encountered any in the Blight so far. Do you expect to fight one? Well, I'd like to be prepared, especially if we do head into the Blight. Um, it's it's difficult, you know, if we don't have as much information as possible. I know some demons and devils and so on, if you don't kill them in the right way, they'll just come back. And I just yes, want to make that sure. Is, that is accurate for this as well. Uh, I, myself, don't know that much about vampires, you would probably be best off checking in the libraries of the temple. <clears throat> libraries. I suppose I should probably do that then. Would you know where to look? I wouldn't know very well, and the librarian is currently out on an expedition. 
the aide is not nearly as well versed, so I don't they'd be able to help you very much. Oh, I don't want to spend an hour in a library. Serial? I can. Serial will offer to do so as well. Alright, what if you guys spend however long you feel is profitable, and I'll go meet up with the rest of the group. Alright, then. So I was actually going to ask about that if he didn't offer. <laughs> so <laughs> then, uh, so while Lily heads off, I'm going to say Serial and Ciara can both w uh, roll an investigation, and I'm going to allow you to do it with advantage because you're in a place of study and it does have information relating to this. I think she has advantage. Also, I don't know if it means anything, but I do have like library stuff in my back as part of my background ability. Yeah, so you would... You want me to post it just so you can read through it real quick? Uh, I kind of read through it beforehand. I'm just going to give you, in this particular case, a plus two on top of the advantage. Okay. Just because I don't have any hard and fast rules for this, so I'm just going to say in the addition the advantage from being in the correct place with the correct library. This isn't. This would be information that they would actually have referenced pretty recently, since what the it pertains to stuff so close to them. So I'm gonna say finding it is just a matter of finding the right book. And since you already know how to look through the library and all that stuff, I'm just gonna give you the plus two on top of it. I think that would be the only part that would matter. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna say you had a 21 and Serial had a 20. So the things you're able to find in it is looking into things, you'll find that vampires are actually shapeshifters. They're able to transform into a bat, and you're not really sure much anything else. Um, so you, yeah, no, you're around 20. So you, you both know that you'll be able to turn into a bat, and actually they're able to turn into mist as well. Um, you know that they do tend to be extremely durable and will. Like if you cut off their wound, they could probably heal their arm back. I cut off an arm, they could probably heal the arm back within, oh, within probably a minute at most. Hmm. Um, they tend to have a number of interesting weaknesses. As you've probably heard before, they cannot enter a residence without an invitation from one of the occupants. They tend to be harmed whenever they tend to when they stop in running water. A stake to the heart will completely incapacitate a vampire until it is removed. And of course, being in sunlight tends to destroy them very quickly. All As right. for properly killing them, the best thing you can see is that it's related to when a vampire is killed, it will do everything in its power to try to get back to a resting place, be it a coffin or something else. And once it's in this resting place, it is able to regenerate back to full health within little over an hour. So the ideal situations for dealing with vampires is to prevent them from reaching this resting place. Oh, this will be fun. This will be really fun. Actually, let me think about it. They heal that much, so that one would be back to full health in like, damn. If, if you don't kill a vampire when you first fight it and you lose sight of it for five minutes, you're it's just like dead. You did nothing it's... To it. it's like you did nothing to it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be that's, fun. That's why, you, that's why the moment it, the moment you drop it at zero HP, you throw the holy war at the spot it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's. I, and th that'll take you about an hour, the two of you working together to find that information and. Going over it, um, Serio is going to be copying down as much of it herself to have it for reference. I think... um, other things that you will find with that role will be notes on the lair of a vampire. You'll know that you're able to get close to a vampire through a number of things. As you approach the region they are in, there are a lot more bats, rats, and wolves in the region. And the closer you get when you're probably within like a quarter of a mile, a fifth of a mile, getting really close, the plants start to wither and become twisted and thorny, as though you've seen down there in the blight. Um, the shadows seem to be unnatural, moving on their own. And there is a very eerie fog that seems to take the forms of hands that try to grasp you and everything else. Fun. Just as 
just as a way to give people a better idea of when they're getting close to a vampire's lair to keep an eye out for these particular aspects. Alright. Vampires are fun. Vampires are terrifying. <laughs> they don't sparkle, so yes, they are terrifying. They are certainly a very interesting creature. <sighs> just, just because of what they can do and get away with. Yeah. Well, um, we do have sunlight, so we can help. I, I think we should probably bring Cassidy along in this because she can prep Moonbeam, which means shape shifting doesn't work. Um. So. Oh yeah. That. Hmm. Which means it can't turn that. into mist and fly away. Yeah. Yeah. If you roll a moonbeam spell, it says any shapeshifters revert to their normal form. So as soon as it drops to it drops into the mist form, you nail it with moonbeam. Sadly, this is this is all out of character because a Lily's not there and b Lily doesn't know what moonbeam well, does. Well, we can discuss <laughs> tactics anyway. So. We'll be I mean, I have a feeling I would. No. You would also have probably like picked up on ideas on that since you know like it can transform so it would make sense that it trying to get back there would be like try to transform or trying to run away it would try to transform so it would make sense in character for you to want to have at least CR and Serial to have the con come to a conclusion that they probably want to have a way to stop it from transforming. Yeah. So and we might want to exact line. We might want to pick up diamonds for her as well if if that's what you want to do. Uh Maybe, yeah. We do have a lot of gold, but we do. We have a lot of rubies that we can sell as well. Those are mine. If only if I could make someone along the lines of a flashbang that harnesses the power of the sun. That would be ridiculously <laughs> the holy OP. flashbang of Antioch. <laughs> I honestly don't see why the gems got put in the party because I never put them there. Oh, uh, five ruby apple rubies. So I just got a mental image of throwing a flashbang and the vampire's like shielding himself and slowly to disintegrate. Well, that's a very hilarious mental image, I do admit. <laughs> There's a skeleton left. All right. Actually, no. No skeleton. It'll probably regen from that. <laughs> Alright, so... Are you done with the uh, research? So you're going off... We're going back to... Going back in time an hour to when Lily would have met up with Darvin, Shiki, Azul, and Cassidy. All right. So the things they would have found is there are like and Azul, Cassidy, they all explain this. Um, there are a number of obviously consumer goods, uh, pots, pans, just consumer items, keep useful, uh, hourglass, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that there's also a number of shops which do cater to warriors. Uh, there's a nice armor shop which is run by a a family of dwarves which have come down from the Redwall Mountains and they make some very impressive armor and everything else. There is a armor this one run by an elf. He tends to focus more on lighter on uh, lighter weapons, uh, short swords scimitars, bows, etc. But they are all extremely fine quality. Um, there is Further on you go, you know that there is a old human, um, whole old human woman, a crone more or less, and she seems to have a nice assortment of various minor magical goods and a few not so minor magical goods. Hmm. So Lily's most concerned about anything that would help them dealing with the undead or whatever they run across in the blight. So is there anything that deals radiant damage, anything that prevents necrotic damage, um, that kind of thing? Well, to start off with, you do know you have at least one thing already. The I think it was an amulet, which I believe Ciara has currently. Maybe. Possibly. Um, the amulet of elemental resistance? Yeah, because I believe yeah, I have that had radiant and necrotic on it. Yep. Um, other stuff that would resist... Oh, let me let me look through the DMG actually. <laughs> um, what you're gonna find? While Eat. you're looking, a mace that that deals extra damage to undead might be really good, or a, a radiant or holy mace for Sayara. I think there actually so like a is mace an item like that. Though Sayara is actually doing relatively well currently with what she has. What you're saying, Risu? 
like a mace of disruption. Roll the an investigation, Lily. Okay. Yeah, the I don't know of if disruption. disruption be... Yeah, I don't know uh, if disruption works on her. No, holy crap! Yeah, yeah, you're definitely gonna find a mace of disruption with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it would, it's not that odd, considering that they probably would try to get a few of these in, considering what they're fighting. Um, the elf, I'm gonna say, actually has this among his wares. Okay. As you go to investigate his um, home. And it's a very interesting looking mace. It appears to be almost completely made out of gold. There's a few flings, an orb sitting in the middle, and at the top it almost looks like a sun with various rays coming off of it. And as this looks very obviously radiant in nature, you decide to question it. And he'll explain, Ah, uh, yes, this is, well, a rather in-demand item in this place. A mace of destruction. When it's, it's mostly useful here because of the blight, though... So any fiend undead, any nasty creature such as that that it hits, will take extra radiant damage, and if it has low enough health, it may even be outright destroyed. Yeah. Um, how much? <laughs> and also, um, you'll also pick it up. It also uh, gives off light as well, so if you're trying to sneak around, that might not be the simplest thing to do. Just normal light? Torch light, so 2020. Okay. Sure. Like some blade that can go up even further. And when that comes up, James, I just want you to remember: clang, 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 clang. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And plus, so you can uh, you can put a sack over it or something and block the light. Um, how much yeah. is it? Well, since this is in rather high demand in this region, it's not going to be that cheap. I'm afraid. It would be four and a half thousand gold. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have any? arrows or something that would be radiant tipped mm, radiant tipped arrows um perhaps not quite that simple I uh, know the arrows of Snain probably wouldn't be that useful to you it's not for the cost arrows of I what arrows of slain they're rather expensive and they do do a lot of damage though those are particularly preserved for important targets hmm I don't believe I have anything that is explicitly covered with radiant energy. At least nothing that goes strictly over the... that isn't strictly cons um, taken by the temple to help fiend off the blight. Do you have any arrows of undead slaying? We have a few, though those are extremely expensive for what they are. How much are they, and what do they do? Well, an arrow of slain will deal an extra... An extra swarm of damage, much greater than what an arrow is capable of doing by itself, assuming a creature can manage to... isn't quite durable enough to stand up to it, though. Even if they are, they still take a decent bit of damage. It is very expensive, though, as I said. Probably 5,000 per a single arrow. That was more expensive than I expected. Um, they are very rare, and I'm not really sure if you're supposed to sell them in bunches or not, because they do an extra yeah. 60 ton. Yeah, technically you're not supposed to, you are supposed to sell them individually, according yeah. to what they say, but it's weird. Um, yeah, and, and there's nothing that would, like, do 1d4 extra radiant damage or anything like that? Or even a nothing. bow that's radiant powered? Nothing or that you an really oath bow see. Or... I don't know if bow isn't radiant. No, it's not, but it deals extra damage against one target. Yeah, no. An oath bow is also a tunic, so why would you want it? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So it looks like the best thing that you would find would probably be the Mace of Destruction, at yeah. least in this particular shop. If you were to look elsewhere, uh, what would you be able to find pretty easily? It's probably not that much. Sorry, um, Sorry Jebus, my, uh, my items are kind of unique. Yeah, I can't really get you bullets of disruption or anything. Uh, Actually, you probably could. You just have to get the metal and have someone enchant it. But I'm yeah. not that. Yeah, you well, the process probably... beyond process of that would be pretty special. You could probably like looking around further in other places. The um, old crone, looking to the stuff she has. She has a rather interesting, f creepy looking robe. And this robe is full of a bunch of stylized eyeballs. And the eyes, when, like, 
you're actually in her shop taking a look at these things. The eyes will follow you, more or less it seems, in Gross. 